I'll come here. I just type in the um, new HK um, industrial labor agreement. Okay. I'll leave this blank where I'll just search the whole of Australia. Let's go seek. Okay, gather all your documents. So if you, if let's say you're a nurse, a diplomat nurse, registered nurse, and you want to come and work as a carer, gather your documents. Okay. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kwame Chumisi. Good news guys, I said in my last video, if there's any good news, of course, I'm going to switch on my camera and bring you a step-by-step -step process, okay? So this video basically goes for um, people that have qualification or experience in assistance in nursing. If you're like a support worker, personal care assistance worker, if you're like an aged carer or disability carer and you're living overseas and you're thinking of migrating to Australia, then this video is for you. So the government has released something they call the new aged care and disability industry labor agreement. This agreement basically gives the power to aged care providers to look outside, okay, for carers to come and work for them in Australia. And the amazing thing about this is if you are sponsored by an employer to come and work in Australia, within two years, you'll be able to apply for your permanent residency. This is like awesome. And I've been living here for some time now, and this is by far the easiest way to get into Australia. Australia. But there is a catch, okay? There is a process to this. So I'm going to take my time and take you through a step-by-step -step process so you guys can take action. So without talking too much, I'm going to jump on the PC so we do the deep dive. See you on the other side. Okay guys, welcome to this section. So before we move on with this video, um, let me quickly share this link with you guys, okay? So everything I'm going to talk about can actually be found on this page okay so i'm going to leave a link um in the description section below you just click on it to suit yourself all right guys so why the new why do we have this new aged care industry labor agreement so basically the government um, basically set this up so aged care providers or so all aged care businesses in australia can directly recruit um aged care workers okay from overseas to come and work for them directly but before they are given the green light to do this they need to go through what i call the two-step verification okay they cannot just straight away go and advertise for job for overseas workers and sponsor overseas workers to come work for them they need to go through a two-step verification and i'm going to discuss that into details Okay, so I've broken this down into four parts. So I'll basically do an overview of the aged care industry labor agreement, okay, or the care visa. I'll quickly go through the overview. Um, in the second part, we'll look at what is required for an employer to be given the green light to recruit um, overseas um, aged or support workers. Then we'll look at what your requirement is, okay, what you need um, for you to be able to be granted this sort of visa. All right, don't look at the next step. So the next step is me basically telling you what to do from now. So after watching this video, if you really want to migrate to Australia and work as a carer, okay, what you need to do or the steps you need to go through. All right, so the aged care or the carer visa overview. All right, so this is for, okay, this is for um, nursing support workers. Um, so this actually includes nurses too. So let's say if you're a diplomat nurse, or you're a nurse in what do you call it, um, living overseas, and you want to come and work under this new aged care industry labor agreement, you can actually do so. Okay, this is also for personal care assistant workers. Okay, so I'll basically summarize this as if let's say you are like a support worker. Okay, if you work with people, okay, you support people, then this is also good for you. you can actually jackpot. And come and work in Australia and also most importantly if you're an aged care worker or a disability worker then this is a great opportunity for you guys okay you can actually migrate to Australia and work and within two years you become a permanent residence before we move forward there are some terminologies that I want you guys to understand okay so in case you read somewhere or in case I make mention of them you do not get confused so the first terminology is called aqf so aqf basically means australian qualification framework so this is how they determine um, it's like the definition of their um, 
certifications okay so we've got certificates we've got diplomas we've got degrees we've got master's degree i'll basically share a website with you guys so you guys can actually go and have a look okay so we have the australian qualification framework website here i'm going to leave a link in the description section below so you guys can go and do a further deep um, deep dive we have IELTS, so this is basically an international English language testing system, okay? Australia is an English-speaking country, okay? So before you can actually be given or uh, be granted a visa, they want to know if you know how to speak English, okay? So you need to go and sit for an IELTS exams, all right? Very important. We have something called skills assessment. So these are basically international bodies Australians have set up, okay? And what these bodies basically do is they will assess the sort of skill sets you have overseas and they will match that with the Australian standard, okay? They, will, they, they basically need to find out if the sort of skill set you have matches the Australian standard. And if it matches, they will give you something called a positive skills assessment, meaning yes, you can use your skills in Australia. We have ANMAC. So ANMAC is an Australian Nursing and Midwifery Accreditation Council. So these people basically um, perform the skills assessment for nurses and midwives in Australia. We have the AQUA. So AQUA is also Australian Community Workers Association. So this is also a body that performs the skills assessment for um, dis disability and also aged care workers. You hear me saying MOU, okay? So MOU basically stands for Memorandum of Understanding, okay? This is basically like a mutual understanding between two or three parties, all right? So these are some of the terminologies um, that I might make mention of in this video. So in case you get confused, just rewind back and have a look, okay? So you guys can understand. Okay, guys, so what are the benefits, okay, of this new Kera visa? all right so one is fast visa approvals so basically meaning the home and affairs okay or immigration will prioritize your visa application okay they'll process it quickly so you can get your visa grants or visa rejected and um, hopefully that doesn't happen to anyone they'll get you your visa grant within no time all right once you get sponsored under the visa subclass 4a2 within two years you can become a permanent residence of Australia this is awesome guys and this is great news all right and the third benefit is no post qualification work experience requirements let me clarify this so what this basically means is let's say if you have if you have let's say a degree or a diploma okay in aged care or disability all right as long as you have a certification to, to prove that you've gone through the studies okay you do not need to provide any proof of work experience that's what this basically means okay but 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 if you don't have the any qualification to prove that you've gone through like um a studies or you've gone through like a course all right if you don't have any certification then that is when you need to prove they have a work experience so if you have a qualification do not worry about work experience if no qualification then you need to prove that you have some work experience working as a carer okay this is really really important um, again another um, benefit is they've got english language concessions okay so this is only applicable so let's say you know how australia is very multicultural okay we've got um almost everyone from different backgrounds living in australia we've got the chinese we got the Middle Easterns, so the Lebanese, Pakistanis, the Iraqis, the Indians, okay? We have the Nepalese, we got the Bhutans, we got Africans, okay? So if an aged care provider, an aged care business is from, let's say, the Chinese community, okay? And they are employing you from China, then you get a concession on the IELTS requirements. Yeah, the concession is not that much, okay? So now you need to prove that you can get 5.0 in the IELTS exams. But if you are getting a concession, then you only need to um, have an overall score of 4.5, okay? Yeah, so that's what this um, concession basically means. And also another benefit is you'll be earning at least 51222 Australian dollars. Trust me, you earn more than this, okay? People working in the aged care or disability industry are getting paid 
a lot because the government has invested a lot into this there's something called the ndis this for another video any questions comment below and i'll be there to help you guys out now so what is a visa pathway okay so this is an employer sponsored visa meaning you need to find an employer okay to sponsor you before you can actually go ahead and apply for this visa all right so once you get an employer to sponsor you so the employer is going to sponsor you and under visa subclass 482 okay this is a temporary visa okay so this will basically allow you to work in australia for two years okay and after the two years the employer can nominate you under visa subclass 186 which is the permanent residency visa it's as easy as that and what is very good about this is you don't need to get stuck with the employer that will sponsor you to come to australia okay if you decide to change employers along the way yeah all they need is an overall two years working experience in australia okay so yeah if you get sponsored by an employer you come to australia and you're not really happy with the, the working conditions you can change employers okay you can look for another employer to sponsor you and that the exact same exact same visa and once you get that okay you just have to prove that you've been working in australia for at least two years and your current employer can sponsor you another visa subclass 186 which is the permanent residency visa it's as easy as that trust me guys i've been living here for some time now and this is by far the easiest pathway to becoming a permanent residence in australia all right so now let's look at the employer requirements okay so what is required from an employer okay guys so before an employer will be giving the green light to what do you call it to go and recruit carrots from overseas they need to go through i call it a two-step verification okay this is not easy okay so the government is not actually making it easy for employers to get this aged care industry labor agreement all right so let's say this is called nancy so nancy owns and runs her own aged care business okay in australia she's an aged care provider okay she runs her own aged care and disability business in australia okay so if nancy wants to recruit someone overseas first nancy will need to get an mou okay from the australian nursing and midwifery federation and one of these two okay so what is mou so mou is a memorandum of understanding i call this a mutual understanding okay so nancy will first need to apply to the australian nursing and midwifery federation and health services union or united workers union so either this and that or this and that and both these unions will need to come through an agreement or an, an understanding that yes um nancy actually needs someone um, to work for her and she searched inside of australia she couldn't find anyone hence she's looking outside of australia to go and look for a suitable carer to come and work for her all right so this two-step verification is very complex okay so if these people say no okay nancy cannot move on to the next step all right so if nancy goes through the um, australian nursing and midwife federation and let's say the health services union they look through her business and they see that yep nancy has actually made an attempt searching inside of australia and she cannot find any suitable um workers to work for her then they'll give her the green light to move ahead with her aged care industry labor agreement application okay so if nancy passes the first stage then she now moves into the department of home affairs and apply for her aged care industry labor agreement so what this body will basically do is basically go through nancy's business make sure she's running like a legit business make sure all her taxes are on point they also make sure that nancy's got actually got the funds to recruit someone from overseas okay and they also make sure that nancy has actually made an attempt of searching through um searching for um carers in australia and if everything is checked then they'll give nancy the acila which is the which is the h care industry labor agreement so once nancy's h care industry labor agreement application is approved then she can now go and start looking for carers 
overseas. I hope this is clear, okay? So this is basically not making it easy, okay? Making it easy for, what do you call it, the employers in Australia to actually get the green light to recruit um, people from Australia. I can actually demonstrate that to you guys now. I know that this is new. So if you actually want to go and start looking for jobs now, it's going to be really difficult because I know most of these employers are now in the stages, okay? And now in the stages of actually getting this um, new HK industry labor agreement approved. Okay, so if you go on seek.com.au now and you try searching for um, an employer to sponsor you, it's going to be really, really difficult. Let me quickly um, demonstrate that to you guys. All right, so I'll just come here. We'll go on Google and let's go on seek.com.au. Okay. So when we go here, let's say, um, what should I even type in? Okay, I'm going to type this in. So I'll come here. I just type in the um, new HK um, industrial labor agreement. Okay. I'll leave this blank where I'll just search the whole of Australia. Let's go seek. So let's just click on the first one now. So this employer is looking for registered nurses enrolled nurses and also healthcare workers okay so this is a good one okay um all right you see important international applicants this is what most of the employers are actually doing all right so to apply for blah 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 no we don't need this one all right so in accordance with the aged care industry labor agreement so that's the name of the company cannot accept international healthcare worker applications okay so they've basically stated it here clearly that they cannot accept um, healthcare worker applications from overseas so this can mean two things it's either one they tried applying for this new industry aged care labor agreement and they got declined or they are still in the process okay and they've not got approved yet so they've stated it clearly here that they are not accepting anyone from overseas all right. So as I said, it's going to be really, really difficult because this two-step verification is not going to make it easier. Okay, for most of these um, employers to look for people overseas. This is just my own opinion. All right, it's my own opinion. But I think with time, they will have a lot of people approved. Okay, and you, when you search for jobs, you'll be able to find some. But now, as I'm talking, it's going to be a bit challenging. Okay, let me just go back and just type in um, H, let's say maybe H care worker. Sponsorship. All right, let me go. Okay, let's click on the first one. Yeah, so H care. Yep. Catholic homes. All right. This one is um, in Perth, Western Australia. All right. Let's go read through. Okay. Again, they've stated it clearly here. All right. Please note Catholic homes does not provide sponsorship to employees. Yeah. So this is just to let you guys know that, um, what do you call it? They are not making it easier for what you call it for aged care providers, okay? For businesses to get this approval, they will need to go through this two step verification, okay? I think, okay, so from another perspective, I think it's too early, okay? This is like a new thing, and um, most of these, what do you call it, um, aged care providers will need to apply. Um, and get their application approved so it might take time so maybe from next month they're going to have a lot of um, aged care providers on the market looking for people okay but as i'm talking as i'm making this video now when you go and start searching it's going to be less of them all right it's going to be less of them there's not going to be many of them on the market actually looking for people and just as the honest truth guys all right any questions comment below and I'll be there to help you guys out. Let's move on. All right. So what is your requirement? Okay. So ask someone that wants to migrate to Australia. What is your requirement? 
All right, so I've basically simplified things here. Here, okay. So you need at least AQF certificate three, or twelve months of relevant work experience. Okay, so you need a certificate that matches the Australian qualification, and um, what do you call it standard. Let's quickly go and have a look at the Australian qualification standard. So when you come on this website, I'm going to leave this link in the description section below. We'll go to the AQF level three or certificate three. Okay, so if you have an international certificate, you need at least, your certificate needs to at least match this, okay? So just come here and have a read. So you know what this entails and compare it to the sort of certification you have, okay? But just know that um, even a diploma is higher than this, okay? So if you have some sort of accredited certification overseas, in regards to you being an aged care worker or dis um, disability worker, okay, in most times it's going to match to this, okay. But this is the at least, this is what you, you need to have. So let's say if you are like a diplomat nurse, I'm very, very confident you'll be able to apply for this, okay. If you're a degree nurse, I'm very, very confident you'll be able to apply for this. So just go have a read and compare your what do you call your qualification to the one in Australia. The good news is if you don't even have a qualification, you just need to prove that you have at least 12 months of relevant work experience and trust me, you'll be able to apply for this visa. This is easy guys. So if you don't have any qualification, that is okay. But if you have at least 12 months of working experience, you'll still be considered for this role. This shows you how desperate they are to bring in more carers. Okay. Okay, so the second on the list is you need to obtain a positive skills assessment from ANMAC and ACWA. So ANMAC will basically um, take care of um, nursing support workers and also, and also personal care workers, okay? And ACWA will also take care of the aged care and disab um, disabled workers. So when we come to the first website I showed you guys, okay? So these are the sort of... Um, people they need so anmac will, so if you fall under the nursing support worker or personal care assistant you need to get your um, skills assessments from anmac and if you're an age or disabled worker you need to get your skills assessments from aqua now how do you do this so quickly just jump on the anmac .org.au. i'm going to leave the link in the description section below when you come here go to the skilled migration services okay and look for the aged care industry labor agreement ila direct care occupations so just click on it and have a read for yourself once you finish with this just go one up to the direct care skills assessments click on that and this will give you a lot of information okay so what is basically saying is that um, you just need to submit your documents to verifications at anmac.org.au all right yeah this is where you submit your documentation so you guys just have a read okay this is pretty straightforward but there is a cost okay so if you want to get your skills assessment done you only need to pay 545 dollars okay so this is if you are applying to be um, to migrate as a nursing support worker or personal care assistant okay you need to pay 545 australian dollars and if you are an aged care or disability worker. Again, same process. Go on the aqua.org.au website. Once you come here, just go on migrants and look for the aged care industry labor agreement. Click on that. Okay. And have a read. Okay. As to what is required. I can make a separate video and go into details with you guys, but trust me. They've got all the information here. Again, with this, you need to pay 595 Australian dollars and the price is all the way at the end here. Okay, the fee for skills assessment is 595 Australian dollars, which is very, very cheap. Okay, so just go on here and click on join, register, pay and get your skills assessment done. It's as easy as that. And trust me, this is the easiest skills assessment you can ever do in australia okay any questions comment below you also need an ielts exam score of 5.0 
or if you are getting the concession you need 4.5 and um, with this i think um they are referring to ielts academics i always tell people to just get the ielts academics done okay getting a score 5.0 is really easy trust me this is doable okay so once you have all these three good outcomes then you go look for an employer to sponsor you and a visa subclass 4a2 as easy as that all right so what is the next step so after going through all this what do you need to do so this is basically my opinion okay so this new industry um labor agreement for aged carers okay is very new okay and the uh, a lot of these care providers that are still getting their what do you call it um industry labor agreement okay so if i were you after watching this video okay gather all your documents so if you if let's say you're a nurse a diploma nurse registered nurse and you want to come and work as a carer gather your documents okay get your skills assessment done again with anmark is 545 with aqua is 595 okay get your skills assessment done once you get your skills assessment done go and get your ielts done okay um the IL ielts um exam normally costs from 175 to 310 us dollars this basically depends on where the sort of country you are taking your exams from okay once you get this done then you now go and look for an employer to sponsor you all right so if you if you find an employer just let them know that you've got all this done and you are ready to jackpot okay most people will go and look for the employer uh, employer sponsored um, first will try and look for the employer first before they go get um, this all done guys invest a bit of money get this done so the employer will know that you are ready to jack back today if that makes sense and um, once you find an employer and you tell them you've got all this done have your receipts ready and negotiate with them trust me once you get to australia most of these employers will reimburse you for all the scale all the money you've spent to migrate to australia so once you get your sponsorship you need to apply for visa surplus 4a2 and the current price for the main applicant is australian 1330 dollars this is also really really cheap okay of course i've not factored in um you going up and down your flight your healthcare cost and the rest okay but to give you an overview this is basically um the sort of main things you need okay and how much money you'll be looking at spending to actually get this visa and once you get an employer trust me most of them will reimburse you for all the money you've spent that if you have any questions guys please feel free and comment below and i'll be there to help you guys out my name is kwami chumisi i'll see you guys in my next video bye